Okay, uh, I am back. It's much later uh, in the day or in the morning than when I um, first woke up and pulled my cards. So this is gonna be a two-part um, video. So this is gonna be the first part explaining some things and then I'm going to go back and do a second part um, to show you the cards and, and tell you what I saw and what I heard. Many of you who've been with me for a long time um, have seen and heard some things when I've been recording um, that may have defied explanation. And so what I wanted to explain to you about was what mediumship and psychic abilities are all about, okay? Because I think sometimes there's a misconception. I also feel that um, there is lots of room for fraudulent um, activities to go on. Basically, what a medium is, defined by Webster's Dictionary, is simply a go-between or an intermediary, okay? Basically, the job of a medium is to relay messages from the spirit world to the living. That's it, okay? But then there's this break. So you have mediums versus psychics, okay? A medium is just that, somebody who's able to relay messages from the spirit world uh, to living beings. Whereas a psychic is somebody who uses or has developed their six sensibilities to tune into a person's energy field. So that's why you will hear me say when I'm reading cards, the energy coming off of the cards. There I am using my psychic abilities, okay? And again, as I say, everybody has psychic abilities. Some people, it's just more natural for them. Um, other people, they, you can develop it, but we're all born with it. Now, mediums can be trained as psychics, but not all psychics are mediums. Okay, so let's get that straight. So I have both abilities. I am both a psychic and I am both a medium. Now, I don't know if you guys remember that movie, uh, that TV show that used to come on called Medium, right? And she would wake up in the middle of the night and, she, you know, with these visions, these dreams, she saw things. So that is the way my mediumship ability comes to me. Typically, when I am asleep, I am at my most vulnerable and my psychic centers are open. And I'll come back to that in a little bit. So then you have something that's known as a channel, okay? And a channel is simply someone who has the ability to tune into what we call the higher beings. These could be ascended masters. Um, things of that nature. Then you have mystics, okay? So literally, there's a whole hierarchy in, in this particular uh, realm. A mystic is simply someone who follows a mystic path through life. Mysticism has absolutely nothing to do with religion. It simply is someone uh, who has dedicated their life to the independent studies of the occult practices, okay? Okay. Now, there are two common forms of mediumship that are practiced today. You have mental mediumship, which is called subjective mediumship. And basically, this is where you enter a light trance state. You are fully awake and conscious, but your brain waves simply change. You can actually do this. You can change your brain waves so that you can tune in to whatever's happening. Um, you can, your guides will come in, other guides can step in, and there's a whole hierarchy of guides and the way they line up and, and everything, okay? But then you have the creme de la creme of mediumship, and this is called the physical mediums. And this is an objective form of mediumship. And the reason why it's known as objective, it is because these people <clears throat> can produce tangible phenomenon that can be felt or seen by other people. So it will uh, manifest itself like an ectoplasm or apparition, apparitions or breezes, rapping noises and discarnate voices. The most famous um, here in America, some of the most famous physical mediums were the Fox sisters who came from Rochester, New York in the 1800s. There were three of them. But then underneath the physical mediums, you have uh, a subcategory 
of rapping mediums. And these are the mediums that are able to produce noises and bangs. Uh, sometimes they will even produce the sound of horns, okay? <clears throat> Uh, these are the folks that can uh, also, uh, the physical mediums can also levitate tables and produce transfiguration or apparitions appearing out of the sky, hands, faces, things of that nature, voices, okay? And then you have the last category, which are the trance mediums. Now, the most famous trance medium, of course, was Edgar Cayce. And trance mediums will enter a deep, trance state okay but can still be semi-conscious right and can relay that information back they can sometimes although produce um discarnate voices as well in other words what happens when you do trance mediumship particularly if you're a sleeping trance medium um and this is something that you practice and you are good at um <clears throat> You allow your control guide, and I know that's a scary word, but there's a there's a guide who will step in, literally step in to your body and will um, help the other spirits come through so that you can bring forth the messages. Um, <clears throat> mediumship is quite interesting. Um, I have known, I've had, I've been able to see dead people since I was a kid. Typically, they have always come to me. I, I either see them before people pass or they come to me after they pass. I don't know if you you know Chad Chadwick Bozeman. Was that his name? I was so shocked to hear that he passed away and that he'd been ill all of this time. And I went to bed that night after I heard it, maybe a couple of nights later. And in my dream, I see this figure approaching me. But he's walking like it, 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 it almost seemed like not even human, this like a creature coming towards me. Very thin, very emaciated. And the person shambled up as if they were in pain. And suddenly he looked up at me and it was Chadwick Boseman's face. It was his full face because had it not been, had his face been emaciated, I would not have recognized him. And I was so surprised to see him in my dream. And he looks up at me and he says, you know, I really didn't want to go. I wasn't ready to go but I just couldn't fight anymore. And I don't want people to be angry with me. And I remember saying to him in the dream, you know, wow, you know, it's really okay. I think people are going to understand your fans, your loved ones, people are going to understand, so it's okay. And he looked at me again and he says, are you sure? And I said, yes, I'm sure you can go. You don't have to stay, you can go, we understand. And he said, thank you. And he turned around and he ambled off. The weird thing about the dream was the perspective in which I saw it. I was way up above him and he looked like he was this tall and he was looking up at me. It was just the strangest thing. And I've never had that type of perceptual depth before. I mean, I've had some weird dreams. I remember once I had a dream where I was trying to talk to somebody and they were yelling at me, but there was this uh, wall between us, this invisible wall it was gray but it was also moving and I kept saying I can't hear you I can't hear you I'm screaming and I'm banging on thing what are you saying I can't hear you and then the person goes away I don't even know who the person was in the dream so that, that was just sometimes I have dreams like that so <clears throat> what I'm going to tell you now is some information after I woke up at 3 30 in the morning and I'm going to show you that in the next video the time that I woke up my guides told me to, um, oh, and let me explain to you about three in the morning, <laughs> okay? Three in the morning is um, a very active time in the spirit world because it is believed that the veil is the thinnest at that hour. In fact, it used to be called the witching hour, okay? And so whenever I have dreams, normally I have no dream recall. They tell us that we dream every night, I don't know because I'd be sleeping, but when I do have dreams, they always wake me up at three. And so I know that this is some kind of spirit or message coming through for me. And so the other day, a couple of days ago, and I think I said this on the video, but I'm going to repeat it in case I didn't. <clears throat> I had one of my guides shook me awake, you know, and said, they're here, they're here. I'm like, what the hell? But I remember the dream that I was having right before I was awakened. 
and it was uh, I was like down in a foxhole and I could see these shadow figures marching by like this it was just the shadows right I couldn't like there was light or something with shadows and I could see that they were marching in line and then my guide woke me up and said they're here you know they're here wake up they're here and I thought well that's kind of weird so mark it down don't know what it means I mentioned it to Jessica Adams you know and I'm like I don't know what that means yet and that was like two or three nights ago but then this morning at three o'clock I had another dream and this time in the dream I was running and I was running away from something people and I kept hearing they're here they're here and I was running and running and running and then my guide woke me up so I came in to pull cards because I, I have somewhat of an idea of what this is about and I'll be discussing that in the next video but they told me to go back to sleep and so as I was saying to you you know during the daytime I'm working I'm doing you guys stuff I'm making videos I'm doing other stuff and so I have had to tell my guides and the spirit well I got office hours you can you can only talk to me between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. that's why I don't do readings after 10 p.m. because I need a moment from 8 to 10 those two hours to decompress close my psychic centers so that I can get some sleep and get up the next day and do it all over again however when there is something very important that they're trying to bring my attention to they come to me in my sleep okay so that is somewhat like a trance medium state right but it's not conscious because I'm asleep and I'm, I'm my psychic centers are more open so whenever I have dreams where I have dream recall I know that this is something important so what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm going to cut this camera off and then I'm going to swing the camera around because the cards are still placed the way they were this morning at 3. And so I'll see you in a bit. Okay, bye. There's something else that I forgot to tell you about mediumship and psychic ability. I had somebody used to rag me all the time on the channel some years back. You never know nothing. You never know nothing. You always telling us stuff and then you don't know anything. Well, <clears throat> The way that it works, for the most part, is that it takes a lot for spirits to come through. It takes a lot of energy. The conditions have to be right. Sometimes they're not strong enough to bring the message forward, so they will relay the message to another spirit who will bring it forth. And of course, sometimes things are lost in translation. But the main reason, the thing is, is that you're being shown, sometimes you, know, you will see things you will hear things, you will smell things, you will taste things, you will feel things, okay? Uh, sometimes voices will actually speak to you and what they will give you is just snippets, okay? I, don't, I can't speak for anybody else who does this work but I have my own mediumship and psychic dictionary of symbols. So say for instance, they show me a sunflower, right? Well, what does that mean? Well, a sunflower can mean it was a person's favorite flower, right? Uh, it could uh, represent the time of summer. Uh, it could represent the south of France. Well, they grow them and make sunflower seeds and sunflower oil, right? So you don't really know when you're getting this information how it quite fits in. And you have to try to piece it together and make some sense of it. And so that's why a lot of times I say to you, I just, I don't know. You know, I could try to fudge it. But that would be dishonest and fraudulent and I don't ever want to do that to people because they really are looking for some information um, another thing is I think people tend to assume because they see it in the movies or they see it on television shows that you're shown these video clips like a video clip um, sometimes it happens that way sometimes it doesn't uh, I remember I did a Akashic Records reading for a client once and um, I actually saw this little video clip like a movie clip and it was a house way back in a field and then I saw this little girl running around in the field with a red dog so I made a note of it in my notes and then when we did the presentation I said look you know I kept seeing this house way back off in the distance and like in the country it was in a field and a little girl running around in the field with a red dog and she goes oh my god 
That's the house I grew up in. That dog was my best friend. So you don't really know when you are bringing the information back, if it's right, if it's true, if it means anything, and if you're even getting it correctly in terms of what you sense about it, okay? You really don't know. So <clears throat> when I tell you that I don't know, trust that I, <laughs> that I don't know. And sometimes I have to come back, they will give me more information and sometimes they won't. You know, you just have to wait and see. So that was the last thing I wanted to explain to you about the way mediumship and, and psychic abilities work. It's, um, it's not a complicated thing. Um, it's just a, a, a phenomena and an ability that really defies explanation. It, it just does. And so that's it. And now I'm going to move over and do the um, cards. Okay. Bye. <laughs>